Hey guys, welcome back to Emerald Explains Beyond. My name is Karish and you all must be familiar with this demonic looking face. It was sister Narsika from the famous Veronica movie. But recently, Netflix released a new movie called Sister Death that deals with the origin of sister Narsika. Obviously, movie was amazing and you should definitely watch it. And that was why today we're gonna talk about Sister Death and even dive deep into the plot of this amazing movie. So stick around till end. On top of everything, if you're new to my channel, then make sure to subscribe it because this is the only place you could see horror from around the world. And with that said, let's dive into the video. The movie begins in 1939 where we see a black and white footage of a little girl named Narsika. It was her childhood when one day Narsika witnessed something mysterious. She did some strange things in her small village that includes from holding a cross high towards the sun to become the cross herself and kneel down in front of the sun. Soon after these incidents, a news spread like a wildfire that a girl named Narsika is a miracle in a small village and the reason was that Narsika was seen the Virgin Mary herself. Now it was not clear in the movie if she did see Virgin Mary or not but through some newspaper cuttings later in the movie we saw that everyone believed that she did. Not only that, if you look into our history, there was also a girl in real life who dealt with something similar. Her name was Mary Bernarde Subirius and she was 14 when she claimed that she saw Virgin Mary and even the church believed her. Anyway, Sister Death movie contains three chapters, each one darker than the last one and the first chapter is named The Holy Grail. The chapter begins 10 years later in 1949 when Narsika had chosen to become a nun but she was a secular canoness which basically means that she had not taken her vows yet and she was not a proper nun. Well, the bishop has asked Narsika to assist in a convent as a replacement teacher for a sister named Ines. Ines had left the convent and when sister Narsika reads the convent, she meets with sister Julia. The two gaze upon bullet holes in a wall that were there since war happened 13 years ago in 1936. Sister Julia and Mother Superior of this convent were only two sisters who remained in the convent after the war. The other nuns left but some new nuns have come to assist just like Narsika. The convent was also a boarding school for many girls who helps to run this place as well. Sister Narsika followed Sister Julia and when Julia goes to inform Mother Superior about Narsika's arrival, a marble came rolling by Narsika's feet. She picked the marble up and also attend some weird noises but no one was around. Now when Narsika meets with Mother Superior, Mother Superior gets extremely happy to see her. Mother Superior was a believer of what Narsika saw in her past and she even had the newspaper frame that contained news about that miracle but Narsika felt detached to that part of her memory. Narsika didn't even remember if she had seen Virgin Mary or not. Well there, Mother Superior told Narsika that she's ready to become a proper nun and take her vows but this puts Narsika in worry. Perhaps she was not ready to devote her life to God but why? We'll find that out later. After everything was said and done, Narsika settled down in her room but on the very first night she was presented with a mystery. She found a box on top of her closet which contained a pair of scissors, some old stuff that belonged to Sister Innes who was the previous teacher and a photo of a dead nun named Sister Sokro. Now as Sister Narsika takes the name of Sister Sokro, a nearby chair tipped on its own. Someone then banged Sister Narsika's room door but when she checked, no one was outside but a weird drawing on the lower side of the wall. The drawing was of a hand man with missing arms and legs. Anyway, the next day, after church prayers, Sister Narsika goes in the confession chamber and talks to the confessor about how she has doubts about becoming a proper nun. There, the confessor had a distinctive voice like he's not human, but confessor told Narsika to believe in God. However, Narsika was worried and was not even sure if she witnessed Virgin Mary as a child or she just believed on the stories people told about her. After this, Narsika goes to teach her class and in the class, we're gonna focus on a girl named Rosa. Narsika introduced herself by writing her name on the blackboard but as she did that, the children started whispering. Not only that, 
Rosa got scared and it was all as if Anrol was seen, a ghost besides Narsika. Rosa was too scared that she pee in her pants and Narsika gave Rosa and her little sister a leaf but she was puzzled by Rosa's action. After class, Narsika again meets with Mother Superior where Narsika got to see a photo album that contained the history of this convent. There was a photo of Sister Ines and some other photos that belonged to dead nuns but they one of the photos were missing and Narsika knew very well that the missing photo is definitely the photo she found in that box. She goes to her room and look at the photo of sister saw croquet but again when she took her name the chair tipped over on its own and Narsika was then sure there's something weird about this place. Once again someone banged on Narsika's room door and this time Narsika listened and pressed her ear against the door and she attended a girl's voice screaming and calling for her mother but when Narsika opened the door, no one was there but a marble on the floor. That marble then moved on its own and Narsika followed that marble and soon she entered in the basement where she found something wrapped in a cloth and it was the holy hand of Saint Kada. This hand actually belonged to this convent and it was some kind of holy artifact for this place that went missing after the war 13 years ago. But seeing that artifact once again, Sister Julia and Mother Superior were perplexed. Mother Superior was delighted and she concluded that Mother Mary guided Narsika in the basement and she was basically believing that Narsika is some kind of medium of God but Sister Julia didn't believe on Narsika or the miracle. Now from here begins the chapter 2nd which is called If She Writes Your Name You Are Cursed. The chapter begins with Narsika meeting a nun who was worried about mixing up the flavors of the treats aka specialties that she was prepping for tomorrow. That nun then asked Narsika to taste those treats one by one and at first Narsika enjoyed that but soon the nun shouted at her and told her to eat the treat in one go. Narsika did that but the taste was weird and soon blood came out Narsika's mouth. The nun began to laugh demonically and was revealed that Narsika was eating eyes instead of treats that she now threw up and then slowly <laughs> The nun's eyes turned black. She laughed and slid back in the darkness but then Narsika woke up revealing that it was just a dream. After a while Two girls came to fetch some stuff from Narsika's room but the two got scared seeing the drawing of that hand man in Narsika's room. This puzzled Narsika and that day she asked Rosa about what happened to her yesterday. Rosa began telling why she got scared but her little sister hushed her and evidently these girls were hiding something. Later Narsika and other nuns were praying but in the middle of that Narsika felt that the beads of her rosary had become soft enough that she can pop him. She did pop him and the beads were filled with blood. It shivered Narsika's spine but then she witnessed a nun lying near the altar who suddenly defied the gravity and became demonic but all that disappeared when sister Julia touched Narsika's shoulder. That night when it was bedtime for the girls, Narsika found all of them dancing in the room. Narsika told him to sleep but the girls insisted on dancing and Narsika too relented and danced with the girls. Everyone was happy but Narsika couldn't even imagine what impending horror was looming over her. Now after everyone fell asleep, Rosa takes one of her friends to the bathroom in the middle of the night but on the other hand we see sister Narsika beating herself with this rope thingy but why? Well, I suppose she wanted to see a sign from Mother Mary so she could believe that what she saw in the past was actually her and this was her way of asking for that sign. Well, now in the bathroom, Rosa was waiting for her friend when water started coming out of the tap and Rosa found that pair of scissors on the floor that we saw earlier. It was then that her friend came back and the two were going back to their room when suddenly the water in the bathtub started moving in a weird way. Rosa can see hair in the water and meanwhile Narsika began hearing crying noise in her room. She then also saw a nun for a play and then the chair tipped over again. 
Nausicaa goes out of her room to check on the girls and she found that the girls were scared because someone has cut the hair of one of the girls. Sister Julia arrived at the scene and all this ended with Sister Julia accusing Rosa for cutting the girl's hair because she was found with the scissors. But when Nausicaa saw the scissors, she was shocked. She goes back in her room and checks Sister Sokro's box and the scissors that were there were missing. And this made Sister Narsika believe that the mystery of this convent is related to Sister Sokro and that was why from the next day Narsika investigated on this matter. Narsika goes in the dungeon where Sister Julia had locked Rosa as a form of punishment but Narsika gave Rosa food and told her that she believes that Rosa is innocent and she didn't cut the girl's hair but there Narsika asked about the mystery of this convent. Now Rosa told Narsika that all the girls believe that this convent is haunted by a spirit of a little girl. Not believed, but they know that because they all see her and the day Rosa beat herself was the day everyone saw that little girl beside Narsika. Not only that, this spirit is the one who draws the handman drawings on the walls, but her drawings are incomplete and the person who completes her drawings will be cursed. Rosa revealed that Sister Ines wanted to prove him wrong, so she completed one of her drawings and then her name appeared as she left the convent. It was simple, if that spirit writes someone's name, they will be cursed. But guys and gals lays in them, we never find out about Sister Ines' story. It's a possible theory that Sister Ines is dead and no one knows about it and the ones who might know are hiding the truth. Anyway, Sister Narsika talked about this to Mother Superior, but she advised her not to believe on children's story. Later, when Narsika was alone, she imagined herself taking her vows, but then suddenly, a demonic invisible force grabbed her. Her clothes tightened on their own, she couldn't breathe, and that entity almost twisted her body. Narsika screamed, but then she woke up. Revealing it was just another dream, but then her sight fell on a drawing of the hand man drawn just in front of her. That day, Sister Narsika was teaching the girls about solar eclipse and how gazing at it directly can cause blindness, which was also a concept in Veronica movie. And when during the class, Rosa ran away, but suddenly her name appeared on the blackboard and it basically meant that she's cursed now. Narsika goes after her and she calmed her down but Narsika there asked Rosa to help her see the spirit of the little girl. This all concluded with Rosa and Narsika completing the drawing of the handman in Narsika's room so that Narsika can see the girl just like Sister Ines did but even after completing the drawing nothing happened. Sister Narsika checked the room but no one appeared and she told Rosa to fear not but Rosa was scared. It was then that the chair tipped over again and Rosa was scared because she was seen a spread but the spread did not belong to the little girl. It was a different spread and according to Rosa, the spread was right behind Sister Narsika The Narsika saw nothing. Rosa said that the spread wants to tell Narsika something but Narsika was not hearing anything and then suddenly Rosa disappeared. Narsika got worried and she ran here and there and searched the entire convent looking for Rosa but she couldn't find her. Narsika took Rosa's little sister help as well but then Narsika was stopped by sister Julia who shouted at her. Narsika tried to tell Julia that there was something demonic happening but Julia yelled at her. She told her to leave the convent because she is no miracle. Not only that. She told Narsika that what she saw in the past was the devil and not Mother Mary. Narsika ignored Julia's hate comments but in the end she reached the confession room where she could hear Rosa whispering prayers in one of the chamber. Narsika couldn't open the door so she goes in the chamber belonged to confessor but then the door slammed and locked on its own. Narsika was trapped inside but instead of Rosa she heard confessor. Confessor there told Narsika some weird stuff that made it clear as glass that the confessor is not a human. Confessor told her that to see, she does not need eyes. And you guys must remember this dialogue. It was then that Narsika witnessed a lot of eyes in the connecting window and then a lot of demonic hands grabbed her from all around. She screamed and somehow escaped from this terror. But after she was out of the chamber, she saw something horrid. 
She saw Rosa dead in the other chamber and seen her like that, Rosa shrieked at the top of her lungs. From here, the third chapter begins, which is called Sister Sokro. The chapter begins with Rosa's funeral that was taking place inside the convent. Everyone was mourning her death and Sister Narsika was extremely sorry, but Julia came to make the situation worse and indirectly blamed Sister Narsika for Rosa's death and she suggested Narsika to leave the convent. Narsika then leaves and she was broken inside and that was why she packed her bag and was off to home but it was then that the sunlight began to twinkle. The twinkling was a result of a solar eclipse that was taking place and as Sister Narsika walked in that twinkling light, she felt something divine, something that she felt when she was a child. She then kneeled in front of the sun, making a cross with her arms and she also gazed directly at the eclipse. She laughed as a divine light fell on her, but Julia saw all that happened as she came to save Sister Narsika. But even when Julia told Narsika to stop looking at the sun, she didn't stop. And soon, the colors of her eyes faded and she loses a good amount of her sight. But with her sight gone, she witnessed the past. Now, without making the plot more complicated, let me just tell you that Sister Narsika was indeed seen the Virgin Mary. Narsika was really a miracle who might also be a medium of God to fight the evil in our world. She saw Mother Mary in the past but she forgot and didn't believe that. But did you guys remember that the confessor told her that to see she does not need eyes and that was why when her sight was taken away she was presented with some special abilities. Abilities that can help her see. Not only that. The confessor was actually an angel who came to guide Sister Narsika and the proof of this theory is hidden in those multiple eyes that Narsika witnessed which was similar to the concept that an actual angel have multiple eyes and you can see it on your screen. Now back in the movie, Narsika saw a vision where she goes in 1936 during the war. The convent was raided by soldiers. The Christ was burned, nuns were running here and there, and Narsika witnessed one of the nuns getting raped. Seeing that, Narsika screamed and woke up in her bed where Sister Julia calmed her down. But Narsika had lost her sight, but not completely. Her eyes were badly burned, but when she told Julia what she saw, Julia was scared and she ran away. Narsika soon realized that she got some special powers now and then she turns the photo of Sister Sokro and then she saw the truth of this convent. Narsika now saw that the nun who was raped was actually Sister Sokro. After that incident, Sister Sokro was pregnant and she gave birth to a daughter. But Sister Julia and Mother Superior decided to keep the daughter locked in this convent for the rest of her life so that the truth won't come out. As Narsika got aware of this truth, she felt the pain of Sister Sakura and her eyes began bleeding. Narsika removed the bandage off her eyes but witnessing Narsika's behavior, Sister Julia knew that she knows the truth and Julia immediately passes the news to Mother Superior. Now after this, Narsika saw the spirit of Sister Sakura in her room which was also Sister Sakura's room in the past. There, Sister Sakura held Narsika's hand and she told her the entire truth. It was revealed that one day, Sokro's daughter caught a bad fever and Sokro wanted to take her daughter to the hospital, which was not acceptable since the girl can't leave the convent. It was why Sister Julia locked Sokro in her room and with the help of Mother Superior, they put the girl in cold water to bring her fever down. But the girl resisted and called for her mother. Now, as Narsika was knowing the truth, some demonic activities take place in the convent. Every person in the convent was then hearing the screams of Sister Sakura and screams and crying of her daughter. The doors were closing on their own and Sister Julia was trying to calm the girls. On the other hand, Narsika finds out that Sakura's daughter accidentally hit her head hard in the bathtub and she died. Not only that, somehow Sokro who was locked in the room knew that her daughter is dead and that was why she used that chair and well, she died as well. It was the reason why the chair tipped over so much and why there were scream and crying noises in this movie. Even that marble was actually related to Sokro's daughter who used to play with marbles. Now in 1936, Sister Julia 
Paul's sister saw Groot dead in her room, and obviously, she and Mother Superior were extremely sorry for what happened, but they didn't do the right thing. They hid the truth from the world and turned Sister Sarko and her daughter into a forgotten memory. The justice of this cruelty, that was what Sarko's spirit wanted. And now, Narsika was extremely furious and her fury teleported her in the past. In the past, Sister Narsika talked with Sister Sarko who was locked in the room and Sarko could hear Sister Narsika. And they, Narsika opened the door for Sarko and that was how she altered the time and faith. Now guys and gals and they said them, it's impossible to change future or time travel, but whatever Narsika just did altered the past, present and future. Now Narsika released Sakura from the locked room, which means she never died and this was why in reality in 1936, Sister Sakura woke up while she was hung on the wall, but we all know that a dead person can be reincarnated and here the theory says that with the help of Sister Narsika's power, Sakura's spirit got the chance to get her revenge. This is not some kind of science fiction plot twist but a miracle done by Sister Narsika. Anyway now whatever will happen in the past will obviously affect the future and now in 1936, seeing Sister Sakura awake, Julia was hella scared. Now in both 1936 and in 1949, Julia ran away from her demonic sister Sakura. But in 1949, Julia meets with Narsika, who told Julia that she opened the door for Sakura. Sister Julia sat in fear, what have you done sister Narsika? And then she ran again, but in both timelines, demonic Sakura followed her. Julia couldn't escape this terror and she ran in the basement in 1936 and she ran in the chapel in 1949. In the basement, there were multiple broken statues that started moving on their own. Julia was scared and suddenly, her cheek gets a cut from a blade but that cut appeared in 1949 as well. Demonic Sokro then appeared in front of her and Sister Julia finally accepted her fate and a statue fell on her in 1936, breaking her face in 1949 as well. The same thing happened with Mother Superior, where she was mourned in the death of the girl in 1936 when the girl disappeared and the Mother Superior was attacked by Sakura, who drowned her in the bathtub. As Mother Superior's lungs filled with water in the past, she curved bloody water out in the present and in the end, she died horribly. Finally, Sakura took her revenge and now Narsika used her powers and freed the soul of that little girl. And then, finally, Narsika believed that she indeed saw Virgin Mary in the past. From here, the scene goes years later where Sister Narsika was introduced in a modern classroom. It was the class of Veronica and we see her as well. One of the girls who will play Oiji board with Veronica address Sister Narsika as Sister Death due to her grim appearance and this is where the movie gets its name and the movie ends here. So this was the summary of the movie, it's just a death and I hope you all understood what I've told you and I have back my video. If you wanna watch this movie then you gotta subscribe to my telecom. If you wanna be in touch with me then follow my other social medias, all the links are in the description box. If you like this video then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe my channel because we're so close of hitting 1000 subscribers so make sure to do that and I'll see you all in the next one. Till then. Stay awake, cause they'll always see you.